Hello class, my methods presentation is on Suggestopedia, a subliminal accelerated method of learning. Here's a definition that I like. Suggestopedia is a language teaching method that originated in the 1970s by Bulgarian psychologist Georgi Lazanov. The name combines the terms suggestion and pedagogy. The main idea being that accelerated learning can take place when accompanied by desuggestion of psychological barriers and positive suggestion. To this end, lessons take place against a background of soothing music in an emotionally comforting environment with the teacher actively planting or unplanting thoughts in and from the learner's minds. Lazanoff believed that relaxed concentration led to efficient retention due to an increase in alpha brain waves and a decrease in blood pressure and pulse rate. Some of the theory behind the Suggestopedia is that communication is a two-plane process. There's language and there's psychological and physical factors that influence the linguistic message. Errors are allowed because errors lead to confidence, he thought. In order to make better use of our mental reserves, Limitations need to be desuggested. Uh, some of the typical features of a Suggestopedia lesson would be that the entire lesson is in the target language. It is teacher-centered. There's a long list of teacher expectations and behaviors that are recommended. I won't get into that in this uh, talk, though. Uh, the classrooms need to be bright and cheerful with comfortable chairs. The background music is sometimes lively, and sometimes soothing. Positive suggestion and negative desuggestion is uh, given by the teacher. There are printed teacher-led dialogues with vocabulary and grammar notes on boards and such. Uh, reading and dialogues by the teacher, rhythm and intonation is matched to music. It's recommended that homework reading of the dialogues by the learners is done just before sleeping and just on rising from the sleep. Classroom activities are based on dialogues, including question and answers, games, and songs. Now, a typical lesson would involve four parts. There's the first concert, second concert, primary activation, and secondary activation. These are a little bit hard to understand without a demonstration, so at the end, I'm going to give you a demonstration. But with the first concert, there is lively music, but a slow pace of speech, with the focus on actions. The concert is pseudo passiveness. The students just sit there watching and listening and taking it all in. They believe it's like washing yourself in with the language, having the language wash over you. The musical background leads to a relaxed attitude, which is optimal for learning and increases the power of concentration. The second concert, with Baroque, slower music, uh, but a normal pace of speech, is given with no actions. Note that the rhythm is slower for the music, but the pace of speech is faster. The primary activation is where students would receive the concert, and so they can read it through themselves or in groups. And then secondary activation is where the teacher is back in the front, drawing their focus to the words and teaching the lesson uh, and the meaning of the words that may be presented that are new. The strengths and weaknesses of the method. The strengths would include that Suggestopedia has taught us that the mind is very powerful and can absorb much faster than people would have assumed. Second, having students who are relaxed can be very valuable in the classroom. And third, background music really can help people concentrate. The weaknesses are that it can be difficult for some teachers to have the access to enough of the comfortable chairs or the variety of music that's required for this method. Uh, second, the process wears thin after a few weeks. Students feel like they want to move on and try something new. They sometimes feel like they're being treated like children. Probably the teacher finds it difficult to, find, to achieve the expectations of this method and would feel it wearing thin also. The focus is on memorization, but not comprehension and creative problem solving. 
And since then, we have learned that language is not about memorizing words. It is about understanding, interacting, and speaking through unexpected situations. Now I'm going to give you a short example of first concert and second concert 